Hey guys, Chip here. Uh, I've got something interesting to talk about today, and that is the new release of K-Cycles X, the alpha version. And I have to say, I'm very impressed. So let me back up a little bit and explain some things. First off, first off, many of you know that I really like to render an Eevee, but sometimes Eevee just doesn't work. And one of the nice things about Eevee is that you have this great volumetrics effect, and we're going to get to that a little bit later, but volumetrics and Eevee just work great. But something that doesn't work great are these little white speckled firefly light reflections. And there's no way I can get rid of these things inside of Eevee. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work. A lot of times I'll just go right into Cycles. And Cycles also has the benefit of just being able to get a little bit more of a realistic render. For instance, if I hit this, you'll see that, you know, I can get a little bit more of a realistic render. This this glow inside of here works a little better than an Eevee. What I want to talk about today is the fact that I'm using cycles more and more. And my buddy, Eric Klein, who I've known from the Blender community for a number of years now, and is one of the smartest guys I've ever met with regard to rendering. In fact, my first course on definitely Eevee definitive interiors, where I talked about how to create photorealistic interiors using Eevee, he was a main source of information for that course, and he does some amazing things in Eevee. But like me, he understands that sometimes you just have to go to Cycles to get what you want. And so for years now, he's been building his own version of Blender Cycles. And a while back, he decided he was just going to go ahead and release his own build. And man, it's pretty wonderful. I, I have to say, uh, one of the things that is amazing about it is it has some features that regular Cycles just doesn't have. In particular, post effects, it can do amazing blooms and all kinds of chromatic distortions, color toning, and other things. And we'll talk about that also in just a little bit. But this new version where he's actually taken the new Cycles X and optimize it for K cycles. So he's added speed to Cycles X, which was already pretty fast. And he's added a tremendous denoiser. And I mean tremendous. So first off, let's talk about the speed. So here is the same file rendered in Cycles 2.93. And it's rendered at 150% of HD. So that means 150% of 1920 by 1080, which is 3525 by 1500. It's also rendered at 256 samples. Both of these renders are done exactly the same with the exact same settings, including denoiser. And I'm going to talk about the denoiser here in just a second. So this is the render from 2.93, and it took 5 minutes and 37 seconds. Okay, now this is the same exact render, the same exact file, the same exact settings in K-Cycles X, and it rendered in a minute 6. So think about that. That's a minute 6 versus 5 minute and 37 seconds. That's huge, and the quality is just about identical. So if that's not good enough, then check out this. This is really exciting. Okay, now here we are with a volumetric effect added to that particular scene. I've got some smoke and I've got a principal volume in there and you can see how it's affecting the scene. This was rendered in seven minutes and five seconds, but let me show you something. So if you look up over here, look at the artifacting around these lights. This is a terrible, terrible denoising issue. Now, this is only 256 samples. To fix this, I've got to go up over a thousand samples or even more, perhaps, which will take the rendering time. It'll just shoot it through the roof. And right now we're at seven minutes and five seconds. So let's take a look at what the new K Cycles X does. So here we are on K Cycles X, and now we're rendering at a minute and 39 seconds. But Look how nice the denoising. Eric's added a great denoiser in here, and this is built directly into K-Cycles. So I don't even know how I would render that other scene without this denoiser because it would just become too crazy in terms of the length it would take to finish. So if we switch over to K-Cycles, you'll see that it's got this ultra denoiser button now that you can select. And you've got multi-pass, you turn on it for volumetrics, and you also have all these post effects. And these things are just ridiculously good because what they do is you add these guys directly in the viewport. I'm gonna push up my viewport samples up to 128 so I can get a little bit of a better, better image here. So check this out, if I go in and add some bloom in this, and keep in mind, in the denoising, I'm using optics, so I'm gonna get some of those artifacts. There's nothing I can do until I go into the rendering. But as I add this, basically I can just take this blend and just go all the way to the max to one right here. And you'll see this is the bloom that I'm doing. And then I can adjust that. I can actually even adjust a color tint in the bloom, which is pretty cool like that. So then I can come back in, put 0.5, which is just going to give me a, get an idea what it does. So, And I might want to make the intensity like 
point three or something like that. So I can adjust all of these things directly inside the viewport. You know, it's got some flares. Um, the lens, the, the, these are chr uh, chromatic distortions, which is just amazing. Point three. So I'm actually look at look over here on the side. Look at the, the chromatic lateral distortion there and the chromatic aberration right here. Let's do point one. We'll add some more, you know, I can actually add a vignette to this thing. So if I basically say vignette intensity one and a vignette size one, you'll see what happens. It'll take a little while to composite, but you'll see that. And if I move vignette size around, you will start to see that the vignette comes in nicely and I can then back off the intensity. So I can just get a little bit of a vignette around there. And I can also even come in and add a little bit of film grain, put some of that noise back in there, but to kind of give it a more photographic feel. Anyway, there's a lot of things you can do. I didn't even get into the toe mapping much, but I mean, there's like exposure, contrast. You can adjust highlights. You can adjust the color tint of the whole scene. There's all kinds of things that you can do in here. And this is all done in the viewport. And then all you have to do is hit the render button. So it's a really, really a amazing upgrade. Now, one of the cool things about it is right now, you can get it at 25% off, which is the lowest price I've ever seen it. And I would recommend getting it while it's on sale. It's a amazing product. I have a link in the description and I am an affiliate, but I don't push any products that I don't fully believe in. And I use this all the time. And Eric is a great developer, great support. It's got a wonderful Discord server and Discord channel and just, you know, it's a great product. So definitely check it out if you get a chance and we'll see you online. Okay. Bye.